What's up guys and welcome to another episode of Nile Kid Tech. Uh, this is Adele and I'm still doing the series on the Sony A6300 for beginners. Um, I want to take a minute first of all say thank you for all the new subscribers and all the views and uh, apologize for the late uploads it's just that I'm really busy this time of the year with uh, my full-time job so uploading and things like that it just gets delayed uh, but again thanks for watching today we will be discussing the program mode as well as the manual mode and I'm gonna show you how to save some settings uh, in your camera so you could quickly bring it up and take some pictures with that being said, let's get started. Manual mode. This part is going to be part technical and part rant. The technical part will be me showing you how to use the setting and how to make adjustments. The rant part, well, stay tuned. If you recall in episode two of this series, I mentioned that I'll defer talking about the manual mode till after I'm done talking about the aperture and the shutter speed. And here's why. The user manual defines the manual exposure mode as follow. Allows you to shoot still images with the desired exposure by adjusting the exposure, both the shutter speed and the aperture value, which is the F value. The user manual's definition might be enough to figure out what this mode does. However, if you're still guessing, let me help you out. As explained earlier, if you adjust the aperture, you cannot adjust the shutter speed. And if you adjust the shutter speed, then you cannot adjust the aperture. This mode allows you to manually adjust both the aperture and the shutter speed. So that's why it made sense to talk about it after explaining aperture and shutter speed. All right, so now let me show you how to adjust the uh, shutter speed as well as the aperture under the manual mode on the Sony A6300. Uh, I have it here set up in front of my uh, Panasonic and let's start off by turning on the camera okay perfect and um, I always have it here I start off as you could see with, um, I always have it in manual first uh, excuse me in auto so let me move it on to manual and here we go and this is the part where you're really going to appreciate um, the Sony a6300 system. I don't know if this is the same deal with other cameras, but once you're in the manual mode, you will notice here that at the bottom of your screen, you have this value right here, which if you remember from episode two in the series, this is the shutter speed. Right next to it is the F value or the aperture. And right now ISO is set up on auto. So to adjust the shutter speed, you would use this dial on the back of the camera. So what you would do is just literally start moving it. And as you could see, the camera is getting darker, the image. And if you go back in reverse, it starts to lighten up. If you remember the shutter speed is how sensitive the sensor is to the light so this on the back right here takes care of the first value there this is one way to remember it which is the shutter speed next one is the f-stop and that one you would be adjusting it from the top dial like this start moving the dial as you could see the aperture value is changing i don't think you'll be able to notice much difference on the LCD and the image changing like the shutter speed and then the auto the ISO well if you also remember from episode 4 ISO has a button right here where you could also adjust it using uh, the same dial after you press the button as you could see and I believe you could also see the effect of it on on the image on the LCD this is pretty much it. So remember, top dial handles the shutter speed, bottom dial or the back dial handles the f-stop or the aperture, and then uh, this button right here, the ISO button, will handle the ISO for you. Pretty straightforward, there is nothing to it, okay? Now, time for my so rant. This is the part where I rant about the whole manual mode. Um, so a lot of professionals like to shoot in manual mode. 
I got nothing against that and I, I don't think that that's a bad thing it gives you a lot of flexibility if you know what you're doing but as a beginner as somebody who's starting out in photography do not be hung up on that do not think that if you don't shoot in manual mode that you will be ridiculed or considered an amateur um, we all do this for different reasons and photography for me is a hobby uh, it's something I'm doing for fun it's not something that I'm doing professionally at least not right now anyway I do have a full-time job my career is something completely different I'm a full-time CPA I own my own practice uh, so this is something I do for fun so I'm not worried about what people think or what people uh, conventional wisdom do or wh whatever it is I just like to learn and shoot what I think looks good so do not be hung up on the whole thing that you have to be in manual mode I think if you're a beginner photographer I think if you're buying a, a camera for the first time it will take you some time to learn that system to learn how to use that camera to learn the different exposures in different settings uh, especially if you're not someone who's necessarily hung up on one particular type of photography like landscape or street photography or you know whatever it is or professional wedding photography or things like that if you're like me you just want to you know capture the, the the experience that you're experiencing in real life in photos then it's a different environment every time you're shooting so I think taking the time using the uh, the auto mode learning how the camera itself is setting up the exposures and then perhaps you making the adjustments as you go in the manual setting you will learn how different settings will work for your system or work for your lens and you know that sort of stuff and it will be a learning experience for you versus you're going into manual mode as a beginner and then you start adjusting the aperture or the shutter speed or the combination of both and you're kind of like shooting in the dark you don't have a benchmark or something to start from in order for you to be you know able to to learn your mistakes so when the system I think that using the the manual or excuse me the auto system um, learning how the camera sets up the, the the photo for you and then adjusting from there you will be able to learn yourself so that's my rant um, I hope it's uh, it's okay and um, I hope you guys will get something out of that little rant now let's go ahead and continue with the rest of the other modes in this episode the next uh, mode is the program mode uh, program mode has been called the training wheels on your camera uh, it really is a good uh, option after getting out of the auto mode and before you master the manual mode uh, the reason why because in a nutshell the program mode allows you to change the exposure uh, that's the shutter speed as well as the aperture value however they change it for you in tandem meaning uh, if you to try to adjust the exposure they adjust it uh, they adjust both the shutter speed as well as the aperture uh, within a certain range so that way you will not be able to screw up but it will also give you a um, a taste if you will of adjusting exposure without knowing exactly every uh, little detail about the exposures it's really simple uh, to get to the program mode all you got to do is change the dial from auto or whatever option you're on to program which is the P not to confuse that with aperture aperture is always going to be the A by the way and from there you use the top dial to adjust the value as you can see they're both moving at the same time the top is the shutter speed and the bottom is the F value or the aperture value and that way you'll be able to adjust it and get it to where you want to take the shot and you just snap the shot all right now let me show you a really cool feature so so far if you've been watching my uh, series on the Sony a6300 you would have uh, learned how what you know sensor size how to adjust the aperture how to adjust the shutter speed ISO all that kind of stuff so what if you found a, the perfect settings for a particular situation that you shoot a lot? Let's just say you shoot a lot of landscape and you already figured out the best aperture, the best 
you know, I saw all the exposure settings for your particular camera. Instead of having to dial in all these settings every single time you're in a shooting situation, uh, most cameras, will, most DSLRs anyway these days, will be able to allow you to program more than one set of settings uh, onto the dial mode. That way when you want to recall those settings, all you have to do is turn the dial to program one or program two, and then be able to go ahead and start shooting with no issues. Let me show you how to demonstrate this. So uh, if you're looking at the Sony a6300 right now, you'll see that I have a uh, cup of coffee sitting on my desk with a uh, banking stamp on it uh, that I use in uh, my day-to-day -day business. Um, this is will be considered like shooting something or a particular portrait just, just for the sake of the example. So what you want to do is turn the dial to whichever mode that we already discussed uh, in the previous episode. Currently, I have it on the aperture mode. This is the uh, aperture value, which is at f3.5. This is actually what I shoot a lot at, and the, right now the, the the picture looks pretty good. Which is, you know, the the subject is uh, focused on. It's pretty sharp, and then the background is pretty blurry. So let's go ahead and access the menu and show you how to save that. So. So it's on the first tab, on the very last page, you go to memory. All right, so as you could see, this is in the aperture mode. Uh, we have everything set up. ISO is auto, F3.5, and everything else looks exactly the way I want it. So I'm gonna go ahead and program it into memory, uh, program memory one. That's it, really that simple. So let me show you. Now if I increase the aperture value, let's just keep it at eight, all right? And if I turn the dial to program number one, where I just save those settings, let's see what happens. There you go, it brought up all those settings that we had. Uh, it even allows you to do any adjustments. If not, everything looks good. Then as you could see, the aperture value changed from 8 to 3.5 because I recalled those settings. Really neat feature. Give it a try. I think you'll really like it. Hey guys, uh, if you made it this far, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing and uh, we'll talk next week. Uh, I will be uh, uploading a video, hopefully this time on time, and uh, we will be discussing the last three modes on the dial left. And uh, we'll, that will be moving on to the menu and other features of the Sony a6300. Thanks for watching and have a great day.